we're going to discuss the antiderivative of a function. An antiderivative of a function, denoted by capital F of x, is the inverse of a derivative of a function, denoted by f prime of x. Let's have first a review on how to find the derivative of a function. Say if we have f of x is equal to 4x cubed plus x squared plus 1, using the differentiation rules, we have f prime of x is equal to 4 times 3 x raised to 3 minus 1 plus 2 x raised to 2 minus 1 plus 0. So we have f prime of x is equal to 12 x squared plus 2 x raised to the first power plus 0. Simplifying further, we have f prime of x is equal to 12 x squared plus 2 x. But what if from positive 1 as our constant term in our given function will be replaced by negative 1? Can we have the same result? Let's see. Say, if we have f of x is equal to 4x cubed plus x squared minus 1. Using the differentiation rules, we have f prime of x is equal to 4 times 3 x raised to 3 minus 1 plus 2 x raised to 2 minus 1 minus 0. So we have f prime of x is equal to 12 x squared plus 2x raised to 1 minus 0. Simplifying further, we have f prime of x is equal to 12x squared plus 2x. So as we have noticed, whether the constant term in our given function will be replaced by any number, the derivative will remain the same because the derivative of a constant is always 0. Therefore, if we're going to get the antiderivative of a function f of x is equal to 12x squared plus 2x, it will be capital F of x is equal to 4x cubed plus x squared plus c, where c is a constant. It can be positive 1 or negative 1 or any constant. Now we have other ways on how to find the antiderivative of a function using what we call the anti-differentiation rules, also known as the integration rules. Let's have the first one. The integral of dx is equal to x plus c, where the elongated s is called the integral sign, which denotes the operation of anti-differentiation. Let's have an example. Let's say the integral of 3 dx is equal to 3 times the integral of dx, which is equal to 3x plus c, where c is any constant. Let's have number 2. The integral of x raised to n dx is equal to x raised to n plus 1 over n plus 1 plus c, where n is n real number and n is not equal to negative 1. Let's have the first example. The integral of x squared dx is equal to x raised to 2 plus 1 over 2 plus 1 plus c, which is equal to x cubed over 3 plus c. Let's have the second example. Let's say, the integral of x raised to negative 2 dx is equal to x raised to negative 2 plus 1 all over negative 2 plus 1 plus c, which is equal to x raised to negative 1 over negative 1 plus c. Using the law of negative exponents, we're going to move x raised to negative 1 to the denominator so that the exponent will become positive and the numerator will be replaced by 1. And so we have 1 over negative 1 times x raised to 1 plus c. 
then divide 1 by the product of negative 1 and x raised to 1 which is equal to negative 1 over x plus c next example we have the integral of the square root of x dx we all know that the exponential form of the square root of x is x raised to 1 half and so we have x raised to 1 half plus 1 over 1 half plus 1 plus c then adding the exponents we have x raised to 3 over 2 over 3 over 2 plus c using the division of fraction we multiply the reciprocal of the divisor by the dividend and so we have x raised to 3 over 2 times 2 thirds plus c wherein 2 thirds is the reciprocal of 3 over 2 then multiplying 2 by x raised to 3 over 2 will become 2 x raised to 3 over 2 over 3 plus c therefore the integral of the square root of x dx is equal to 2 x raised to 3 over 2 over 3 plus c let's have the next rule the integral of a times f of x dx is equal to a times the integral of f of x dx where a is a constant and f of x is a function let's have an example say the integral of 8x cubed dx is equal to 8 times the integral of x cubed dx which is equal to 8 times x raised to 3 plus 1 over 3 plus 1 plus c and we have 8 times x to the fourth over 4 plus c simplifying further we can divide 8 by 4 and it will become 2x to the fourth plus c let's have the next rule the integral of the quantity f of x plus or minus g of x dx is equal to the integral of f of x dx plus or minus the integral of g of x dx where f of x and g of x are functions let's have an example say the integral of the quantity x cubed plus x squared dx and this is equal to the integral of x cubed dx plus the integral of x squared dx which is equal to x raised to 3 plus 1 over 3 plus 1 plus x raised to 2 plus 1 over 2 plus 1 plus c then adding 3 plus 1 and 2 plus 1 we have x to the fourth over 4 plus x cubed over 3 plus c let's have another example let's say the integral of the quantity 3x squared plus 2x dx and this is equal to 3 times the integral of x squared dx plus 2 times the integral of x dx which is equal to 3 times x raised to 2 plus 1 over 2 plus 1 plus 2 times x raised to 1 plus 1 over 1 plus 1 plus c then adding the exponents and the denominators we have 3 times x cubed over 3 plus 2 times x squared over 2 plus c simplifying further we can divide 3 by 3 and 2 by 2 so we have x cubed plus x squared plus c let us now discuss the antiderivative of an exponential logarithmic and trigonometric functions let's have first the antiderivative of exponential functions let's have the first rule the integral of e raised to x dx is equal to e raised to x plus c let's have the example the integral of 3 e raised to x dx is equal to 3 times the integral of e raised to x dx which is equal to 3 times e raised to x plus c let's have the second rule the integral of e raised to a x dx is equal to 
e raised to ax over a plus c where a is a constant which is greater than 0 and is not equal to 1. Let's have an example. The integral of e raised to 2x dx is equal to e raised to 2x over 2 plus c. Let's have now the antiderivative of logarithmic functions. Let's have the first rule. The integral of a raised to x dx is equal to a raised to x over the natural logarithm of a plus c, where a is a constant which is greater than 0 and it is not equal to 1. Let's have an example. The integral of 4 raised to x dx is equal to 4 raised to x over the natural logarithm of 4 plus c. Let's have the second rule. The integral of a raised to x plus 1 dx is equal to a times a raised to x over the natural logarithm of a plus c, where a is a constant and it is greater than 0 and not equal to 1. Let's have an example. The integral of 9 raised to x plus 1 dx is equal to 9 times 9 raised to x over the natural logarithm of 9 plus c. Let's have the next rule. The integral of a raised to x plus 2 dx is equal to a squared times a raised to x over the natural logarithm of a. Let's have an example. The integral of 3 raised to x plus 2 dx is equal to 9 times 3 raised to x over the natural logarithm of 3 plus c. The next rule we have, the integral of x raised to negative 1 dx is equal to the integral of 1 over x dx is equal to the natural logarithm of the absolute value of x plus c. Let's have an example. The integral of 5x raised to negative 1 dx is equal to 5 times the integral of 1 over x plus c, which is equal to 5 times the natural logarithm of the absolute value of x plus c. Let's have now the antiderivative of trigonometric functions. So we have the integral of sine x dx is equal to negative cosine x plus c. The integral of cosine x dx is equal to sine x plus c. The integral of second squared x dx is equal to tangent x plus c. The integral of cosecant squared x dx is equal to negative cotangent x plus c. The integral of second x times tangent x dx is equal to second x plus c. And the integral of cosecant x times cotangent x dx is equal to negative cosecant x plus c. Let's have some examples. Let's say the integral of 3 sine x dx is equal to 3 times the integral of sine x dx which is equal to negative 3 times cosine x plus c. Next, the given is the integral of negative 4 sine x dx. This is equal to negative 4 times the integral of sine x dx, which is equal to negative 4 times negative cosine x plus c. Then simplifying further, we have negative 4 times negative cosine x is equal to 4 cosine x plus c. Let's say we have the integral of 5 cosine x dx. This is equal to 5 times the integral of cosine x dx, which is equal to 5 times sine x plus c. If we have 
the integral of negative 8 cosine x dx. This is equal to negative 8 times the integral of cosine x dx, which is equal to negative 8 times sine x plus c. Say if we have the integral of the quantity cosine x minus sine x dx. So this is equal to the integral of cosine x dx minus the integral of sine x dx, which is equal to sine x minus negative cosine x plus c, which is equal to sine x plus cosine x plus c. Okay, so what if we have this given? The integral of cotangent squared dx. So since cotangent squared is equal to cosecant squared minus 1, then the integral of the quantity cosecant squared minus 1 dx is equal to the integral of cosecant squared minus the integral of dx, which is equal to negative cotangent x minus x plus c.